Arts are the way to the future for older people. They're not just playing bingo anymore. Find your voice, because you've got, you got to create a voice. You need to get it out. We have a wonderful opportunity here to make the arts relevant to people. Everything the Clay Center does now, we ask ourselves, is this something that would benefit the 55 plus population? How could it? It'll open a window and you'll be able to get a sense of all of the different avenues that you could go down. Art at Hand, Creative Aging with Clay, is a Minnesota partnership co-production of Northern Clay Center and Twin Cities Public Television. Funding for this program has been provided by the Wallace Foundation under its Wallace Excellence Award Initiative. Additional support provided to Northern Clay Center by an arts learning grant from the Minnesota State Arts Board. These activities are funded in part by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund, as appropriated by the Minnesota State Legislature with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. We had heard the state demographer speak about the growing audience of 55 plusers, the baby boomers, the silver tsunami. And um, you know, there was a part of us that wanted to kind of jump on board. And there was a little bit of research that was just starting to be done on the benefits, the, the health benefits, the you know, physical benefits of arts and aging populations. We've been working with a wonderful woman, Pat Samples, who is formerly with the Minnesota Creative Arts and Aging Network, now called ArtSage and she's been a great resource for us. The benefits are multiple. I mean, certainly for the participants, there are uh, well-documented health benefits so that people are feeling better and literally their health is improving as a result of being involved in these kind of activities. And there's certainly a sense of empowerment that comes from taking charge, from creating something, from learning something new, having a sense of mastery. There are the benefits of getting involved with other people, being socially active is a, one of the healthiest things people can do as they get older. You start to get good, so. <laughs> I think the Clay Center crosses all age groups, and the program with Art at Hand is so welcoming for people over 55. Um, I don't feel like, I mean, I sit back here and throw with people of all ages, and I think we render um, some words of wisdom sometimes. We have, you know, that, but we sure learn a lot. We were a lucky recipient of a Wallace Excellence Award, and they have a variety of initiatives. Audience development is one of them. And so essentially, we had to identify ways in which we would broaden and deepen and diversify a particular audience. We knew we had a very strong and compelling case. We wanted to better reach the 55 plus population. I was on an advisory committee when we first got the Wallace uh, grant money um, and helped to think through how could we both bring people to experience all of the things that we do at the Clay Center as well as go out into those facilities where people are more place bound. With this population, we sort of had the product, right? We had really wonderful teaching artists, but you can't deliver the material in the same way you would to a third grader. You know, we're delivering material to people who have years of knowledge and experience, even if maybe they're in a situation where they can't access that knowledge and experience. We had to work through a lot of the, the sort of just logistics as well as relational issues, but we've got the recipe down. We are really interested now in expanding that to reach out to a lot of the older adults who are really interested in being active and wanting to explore new things as they age. And we want to we want to uh, figure out how to how to engage with them wherever they're at um, and bring them here, go to them, uh, be out in the community. If we're really good planners on the front end, we're bringing all of the essential partners to the table for discussion. We're not just presenting how we think it should look. Our teaching artists and what we call the gatekeepers, the point person at the institution, they're co-producers of the event. We had to listen to our partners in a new way. You know it. We couldn't just package a product and say, well, we've done all these things, pick one. It was, you know, from the start, what do you want? What do we want? And I think still schlepping the material continues to pose a challenge. We run into partners who still aren't sold on the healing benefits of clay, don't like the idea of the mess, they want something quick and easy, they just want a half hour. So it's taking the reality of the material and trying to merge that with sort of the restrictions and the goals and the limitations of our partner. 
it can be a lot of work. <laughs> the Art at Hand program came to be kind of um, a great signature for us um, because it encompasses um, all, all the different populations that we serve and, and allows people to interact with the Clay Center in a, in a variety of different ways. Some of the most successful things that have happened have happened because this teaching artist has a relationship with this group already or this teaching artist is a parent who suffered. Um, so I know two teachers, um, Angie Renee and Lucy Yogurst, have been amazing additions to this initiative. And did you not get the memo to dress for mess? <laughs> Someone like Lucy comes to the Clay Center with years of experience in the arts. She's been a potter forever and a day, even though she doesn't look a day over 30. And she's worked with the Walker Art Center as a tour guide, and she's talked about art and taught other art educators how to teach and has had ailing parents herself. Counterclockwise. Teaching and working with creativity feeds me in ways I don't get other places. <laughs> Would you grab just any one of those hunks of clay over there, please? <laughs> Thank you. So I'm gonna sort of get this ready. On your first pot, I'm just gonna put a drop of water right in the middle because it's, it'll make it sticky so this doesn't jump around. After you do your first pot, clay sticks to clay so you don't have to worry about that anymore. So I'm gonna aim for the middle and you're gonna throw like you're firing into third base. Like that is not gonna work because it's not sticking, right? So throw it on there. You can read a book, but that's nothing like seeing how somebody controls their hand in terms of forming their piece, their work. So it, that live physical experience where you can interact with an instructor is really a wonderful gift. Very few people feel comfortable or confident about asking questions in, a, in an unfamiliar setting. So I try, I try, to, um, I try to do that and interject humor wherever you can puts people at their ease, and when they're at their ease, when you're having fun, you do much better. You're gonna have such fun. You like to get messy, don't you? I, my oh, wheel's yeah. gonna be a lot slower than <laughs> that. <laughs> That's okay. okay. It's okay. So, I'm just gonna pinch the, um, the tip of my thumb, and if your fingers are looking at the ceiling, that bone of your knuckle is gonna st really stick out. Down. You can feel it. Okay, and I'm gonna float that right in the middle, in the middle of this turning ball of clay. I'm just gonna float that there, and sure enough, there's the middle. Can you see it? If I put a little drop of water in there, there it is. You have this sharing from the instructor to you as an individual, but he's also sharing to the others, and then in your classmates, you get this opportunity to share amongst yourselves. I'm very flexible, and I try to make it age and experience appropriate. Now stay right in the middle, take a deep breath, blow it out while you're going down. Your whole fingerprint, not just your fingertip. Are you in there? Keep going. I'm going to let go. Whoopsie. Bye bye. You got it. I want you to have fun with this while I'm gone. All right? I'll be back. Maybe three quarters of what we know in the world, we get the information from our fingerprints. We really do. So this is your strong hand, right? Oh, yeah. So just do this like here. Okay. okay. And, and anchor your elbows. Okay. Okay. And just, be, just your fingerprint goes straight. No, just one. Okay, this is doing the work. This oh, okay. there you go. Okay. Are you ready? So, uh, no, let's... I'm not doing too good. Hey, Carol. Wait, what is... No, don't go, don't, don't go, don't go anywhere. Okay, down, wait, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> They can trust how things feel. It might not look right, but if it feels right, and if you feel like it feels right, trust that. Go with it. Okay, so this is your strong hand. Right. Okay. Right. And these guys are on vacation. Okay. All right. These guys are on vacation. Okay. All right. And which of these two fingers is stronger? No, they're both pretty good. Okay. So you, whichever feels better, you can crisscross them. And then your thumbs are your new best friends. So okay. they're going to be all together like this. Like this. And then, so, it, but you want to want to turn this hand ever so slightly so it's looking at the clay this way. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Now you're up by the nine. Up. Can you back, back this up toward, toward sure. the seven? Okay. Oh, sure. Okay. Now make sure it's going around and around before you do anything. All right. That's good. Put a little bit of water in there. Okay. So this is pushing against this. Okay. This is not pushing back. And you're at the seven, right? Right. Okay. So we're coming up. Yeah. Are you breathing? Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. You still breathing? Yeah. Good. 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 Beautiful. It makes people feel good. You know, when you make things and you, and, you, you know, and you think it's halfway decent, you know, it meets some kind of expectation, it makes people feel good. 
now that I'm retired, I wanted to really delve into creative endeavors, and uh, I was really fortunate to find the Northern Clay Center and just have at it. So anytime I can play around with anything that has to do with art and learn something new, I'm happy to do it. It's also kind of therapy because I had a stroke five years ago, so it gets me to use my right side. So therapy, and I get a pot or something if it works out. So all I have to do is have one part of it turn out. Suddenly, oh, I can do this. Do I have clay on me? Get the small here. Do I? Get the water on me. Get the water on me. I've seen such remarkable exuberance be exhibited by people who find that moment of, of joy when they shape something in front of themselves that says something about them and they show it to somebody else and somebody else says, oh, that's beautiful. And their children suddenly realize, oh my gosh, I didn't know this about my parents. And it's really exciting to see this kind of thing happen. Under this initiative, we've had um, a lot of luck. We've had a nice a nice mix of partners, and so it's run the full spectrum. So we have work that we do in a clinical setting with Bethesda Rehab Hospital. We're working with a really wonderful gentleman named Robert Payton, Bob, and he's a rec therapist and a musician and has done some remarkable things with a local group actually called the Midwest Arts and Healthcare Network. And so he's one of those gatekeepers that is so invested in bringing arts to his population. Um, I mean, he's, he works around the clock, he works tirelessly. And we've worked with um, adults and caregivers, uh, adults with Parkinson's and their caregivers, and have done some collaborations with them, a wonderful healing tree. I'm a therapeutic recreation specialist. And so my role is to use therapeutic recreation to um, help those patients in any way we can to improve their quality of life. And we, we bring in the arts as a way of, of uh, supplementing what we do, of adding enhanced meaning and value to our work. I really see the arts as being a really strong way to help people. I, I say that the arts engage the healing power of the human spirit. We like to try things at Bethesda. We're kind of a laboratory with the arts. We had not done anything with clay other than we had had a kiln and we were painting some stuff that was called greenware, it's pre-fire. And we thought, well, maybe we can use clay to help facilitate a deeper level of creativity with our patients and also using um, the resources of Northern Clay Center to work with our staff to help train them so that when the artist leaves that we are still having a creative clay program here at, with our patients. At Bethesda the residency was for a treat. The concept was a healing treat so each person um, made a leaf. I made the trunk uh, and they made a leaf and it had verbiage on it. As you can see, each leaf is, a, is created by a different patient. And there's a whole variety of different expressions. And it's very personal. And there are a couple of these leaves that are negative because that's important too for people to express their feelings of uh, difficulty while being in the hospital. But, but so many of them are hopeful. And when you look at them as, as a group, you can really see just the breadth of experience of the people that are coming here to the hospital from throughout the community, from all walks of life, dealing with issues and the, the care that they're receiving. And it just shows really the, the value of the quality of life, the uh, health and well-being of people beyond just a physical model of health care. This is an abstract sort of thing um, in terms of what he was talking about. The artists that came over, we, we, we learned a lot working together. We learned uh, a lot about process. We learned that uh, the process of working is more important than the end product. And we found that this kind of activity works great. It works much better than something that is a predefined craft project because it's so free form that everybody that does it succeeds. And if you need any help, if you have an idea, if you need any help, this is um, yeah. Please what sing Lucy up. is good mm -hmm. at. Yeah. <laughs> they have many of them. Tremendous trembling, you know, if they had to write something. But they put clay in their hands and all that would go away. Yeah, Look at the swimming. Yes, oh, they were so, so, they so, were so nice. good. Can you tell me about this part right here? What is this? Um, this I'm making a mug. 
So if you just take this, something like this, doesn't have to be straight, can be crooked, can be crunchy, can be wavy. I'm just going to put this on here. So this part's going to look different than this other's. I'm going to take my trusty rubber rib, and I'm just going to go across this again and see it sort of embeds it into there. Ta-da! Yeah, Lucy, I kind of like that. Could I? Sure. Sure, sure. thank you. And I like some mom. smaller ones, too, in red. Mm. The grocery store as a source oh, for clay tools. This is yeah. the outside of Brazil, huh? It's a good size, They're going to make it. Yeah. If you want it to be the inside, then we'll decorate the other side. If you want to have all the information on the inside, you sure can. No, no I, I'm just trying to visualize. Oh, oh, you're yeah. going to make a, going to make a mug out of this. Yeah, so we're just going to make a nice straight line. And when we take this off here, you can just start at one end. We'll just roll it up. And we'll save this for something else for later on. Creativity is, you know, there are so many ways of exercising it, you know? And it's everywhere when you think about it, it's everywhere you go. The best of the arts can celebrate what it is to be human. But what better way to help people to use the arts to help them when they're dealing with uh, very, very difficult situations and challenges in their lives. Another one of our partners in another suburb across the Twin Cities, Ebenezer Ridges, a uh, lovely woman named Andrea Lewandowski, has been doing amazing things for that organization. She and the organization have been recipient of uh, numerous awards for their work with arts and aging populations, so we're really proud to be able to work with them. The lifelong learning coordinators within Ebenezer are always looking for different community arts partners, and we were fortunate enough to, you know, know someone who uh, could get us in over at Northern Clay, and, and Sarah was willing and ready to expand it to the intergenerational partnership here at Ebenezer Ridges. Ebenezer is amazing. It's got this preschool in the middle of this aging adult society, and that just brings all this energy and life to um, the building. It's the most amazing thing to see the children be able to watch the grandmas and the grandpas, that's what we call them, bring their lives and their perspective to the world to these little kids. And we have six weeks to five-year-olds. And they all do things together with the seniors every day, Monday through Friday, when they're here. I think the most beneficial aspect with the Northern Clay Art at Hand program is that the residents the senior clients and the children all get an opportunity to get their hands actually working and they can see that they're individually making a unique treasure that they're going to pass on. The family members are like waiting for them to finish a project so that then they can send it to a grandson who lives in California or even a great-grandchild you know, who lives out of state or down the block. They're, they're itching to get all of these pieces from them. Every time I go into a new place, I try to find out what the population's going to be. You know, if people have some things to hold them back, you know, maybe stroke victims and they have limited use of their arms or, or whatever. And so I, I want to know as much as possible. I really try to make projects simple in the beginning. If it's a residency that's maybe 10 weeks long, we start usually with a pinch pot. And then we add to the pinch pot and make an animal out of it or a mug. And then I build off of each week that there's skills that are taught that they can then create more and more pieces that are more difficult. Today we're gonna to make an angel. I showed you all an angel. And I found a poem about an angel. We are touched by angels. Walk where angels tread. They will guard and guide us through the days ahead. In times of the season, as in the days of joy, they bring us hope and comfort. Nothing can destroy. In the hours of darkness, when our dreams have flown, they bring us peace and healing. We are not alone. All right, so this is the skirt. This is the skirt of the angel. So we're going to make a pinch pot first. So how do we make a pinch pot? How do we do that? We take our thumb, and we're going to stick it in the bottom, the wide part, not the top part, because this is where the head goes. So turn it upside down. There you go, Bert. And then stick your thumb in the bottom. 
The project was a good one because it was step by step so we could build, you know, we're going to first make the skirt out of a pinch pot and we add a little texture and then we roll the head. So we're working with all kinds of different ways to play with the clay. And then we scratch and attach and put the head on and then we're going to form the wings or make the hair. And um, just the conversation that was happening, you know, one of the volunteers started asking, you know, well, what should we name our angels? And it just led to this wonderful conversation with everybody making choices on what to name their angels. Okay. Now, does this look like Beautiful. you, Marlene? Does that look like you? Oh, Peel that head up. Okay. What I noticed is when I've done angel projects before, the angels will tend to look like the person who makes it. I thought it was really interesting that Marlene named her angel Pete. Perfect. Angie and I have, we speak frequently about what the projects are that we're going to make. And um, lately we've been asking a lot of the participants, you know, what would you like to see? What happened was a couple weeks ago one of our participants passed away. and. Um, Angie and I started talking about that loss. And it's, I hate to say, but a common thing for me working here. But for our teaching artists, they don't typically see that as often. Um, and for the participants who participate in that class, that's one of their friends. And um, we see ourselves as a, a family. <laughs> Lil, she started coming down a year and a half ago when her husband had passed. And I have to tell you this about clay, though. She couldn't even penetrate the clay. I mean, she couldn't push into it. She couldn't do anything with the clay because her hands were so um, frail. A year and a half later, she can push her thumb in. She can pinch it. She paints the whole piece where before she might have just lift her hand up and gone a couple strokes and said, okay, I can't do it anymore. It's, it's too much work. And she's built those muscles in her arm and her shoulder to create and finish pretty much the whole piece with a little bit of help, but not with the painting. I mean, she does it all. And she said to me, she comes down a half an hour early, sits there, and she's like, well, I'm not going to sit in my room and wait to die. You know, I want to experience. And she goes to everything. And that's what this is about. It's about bringing you know, experiences to people who haven't been able to do that and to touch that creativity within them because it's there for everybody. And sometimes they don't get it till they're 92 years old. Lillian's family just thinks that her doing these creative arts programs is the most amazing thing that's ever happened to her. And she has said to me in the past, Lillian has said, if it wasn't for the creative arts programs and painting and doing pottery, I would be sitting in my room thinking and that's no good for anyone. When we got the funding to work with the older population, I'm like, sign me up. And the groups that I work with are so amazing. The people that I work with are so loving. And I just, it's, it's the most fulfilling thing I could ever do with my life. I like this. I, uh, at least we got something to do. At least we don't have to sit upstairs and watch TV all the time, you know. This is something that's feeding their creative spirit. It's feeding their soul. The question I have is, does investing in these kinds of programs pay off in better health outcomes for the people that are participating? I believe it does. These partnerships bring together two powerful uh, groups in the community, those who are serving the older population and those who have arts uh, services to offer and building something together that's, that's a beautiful creation. Through the support of Northern Clay Center, we put together the Midwest Arts and Healthcare Network that now is a network of over 100 professionals in our area that are working in arts and healthcare. These kinds of programs are really powerful, but they're even more powerful when they give us a chance to connect with other professionals in the community that are doing like-minded things. I really hope that the work that we're doing can benefit more organizations, maybe not just even locally in the Twin Cities. I think that there's some best practices here that we could share with our other sister clay organizations across the country. Folks don't always know us, and they haven't been here. They don't know all the things that we do. 
So I would hope that in five years we've achieved a higher level of visibility and have more people who are able to take advantage of, of whether it's coming to the gallery, whether it's taking a class, whether it's experiencing a workshop, whatever it may be, but just uh, reaching more people. I would say if you're a couple and you're interested in doing something, this is a really great thing because you have so much to talk about. Don't put it off. Don't postpone it. Don't wait. Do it. Art at Hand, Creative Aging with Clay, is a Minnesota Partnership co-production of Northern Clay Center and Twin Cities Public Television. Funding for this program has been provided by the Wallace Foundation under its Wallace Excellence Award Initiative. Additional support provided to Northern Clay Center by an arts learning grant from the Minnesota State Arts Board. These activities are funded in part by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund, as appropriated by the Minnesota State Legislature, with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008.